The Cube presents UiPath Forward 5. Brought to you by UiPath. We're back, The Cube's coverage of UiPath Forward 5, and we're live, Dave Vellante with Dave Nicholson. Ajay Gupta is here. He's the Chief Digital Transformation Officer at the Motor Vehicles of California, DMV. Welcome, Ajay, good to see you. Thank you, good to wow. be here. You, you have an interesting job. I would just say, you know, I've been going to conferences for a long time. I remember early last decade, Frank Slootman put up a slide, people kind of hanging out, waiting outside the California DMV. You were the butt of many jokes. But we have a happy customer here, so we're going to get into yeah, your case yeah, study. Yeah, very happy customer. Obviously, Glad you've transformed the organization. I think it's pretty clear from our conversations that, that automation has played a role in that. But first of all, tell us about yourself, your role, and what's going on at the DMV. Uh, sure, uh, myself, Ajay Gupta, I am the Chief Digital Transformation Officer at the DMV. Somewhat of, I one would say, a made up title, but governor's office <laughs> asked me, okay, we need help, and that's what do you cool want title, to be called? Yeah, yeah right. so I'm like, well, we are doing business and technology transformation, so that's, that's what I've been doing for the last three years at the DMV. Before that, I was in private sector for 25 years, decided first time to give back, because I was mostly doing public sector consulting. So here I am. Okay, so you knew the industry, and that's cool that you wanted to give back, because I mean, obviously, you just in talking off camera, you're smart, you're very cogent, and you know, a lot of times people in the private sector, they don't want to go work in the, in the public sector, unless they're, unless they're power crazy, you know? <laughs> anyway, so speaking with David Nicholson, the experience has gone from really crappy to really great. I mean, yeah. take it from here. Yeah, yeah. what am I going to be? I'm because I'm from California. I was just, I was just, you know, we got a dual case study here. eloquently <laughs> about about the 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 change that's happened, uh, just in just in terms of simple things like a registration renewal. It used to be, go online and pray and weed through things, and now it's very simple, very very fast. Tell us more about about um, some of the things that you've done in the area of automation that have increased the percentage of things that could be done online without visiting a field office, just as an example. Yeah, what's the story? Yeah, uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for uh, saying nice things about uh, DMV. You as a customer, it means a lot because we have been very deliberately working towards uh, solving all customer po pain points, whether it's in-person experiences, online, call centers, kiosks, so all across the channels. So we started our journey, myself and director Steve Gordon, uh, about three years ago, almost at the same time, with the goal of making Department of Motor Vehicles in California as the best retail uh, experience in the nation across industries. So that's our goal, right? Not there yet, but we are working towards it. So for our, for our in-person channels, which is what you may be familiar with, first of all, we want to make sure brick and click and call, all the customer journeys can be done across the channels. You can decide to start journey at one place, finish at another place, so all that is very deliberate. We are also trying to make sure you don't have to come to field office at all. We would welcome you to come, we love you, but we don't want you to be there. You have better things to do for the economy, we want you to do that instead of showing up in the field office, being in the wait line. So that's number one, creating more digital channels has been the key. We have created virtual field office. Uh, that's something that you would become familiar with if you're not as a DMV customer. Uh, during COVID, the goal was we provide almost all the services. We connect our technicians to the customer who are in need of a live conversation or an email or a text or a, uh, or a SMS conversation uh, or chat conversation in multiple languages um, or a video call, right? So we were able to accomplish that while COVID was going on, while the riots were going on, those of you, uh, you, you know about that, we, our offices were shut down. We created this channel, which we are continuing, because it's a great disaster recovery, business continuity channel, but also it can help keep people away from field office during peak hours. So that's been very deliberate. We have also added additional online services using bots. So we have created these web and process bots that actually let you uh, do the intake, right? You could, we could set up a new service in less than four weeks, a brand new service online. We have set up a brand new IVR service on call centers in less than a month 
for our seniors who didn't want to come to the field office and they were required certain pieces of information. And we were able to provide that uh, for our customers um, by creating this channel in less than, less than four years. And the pandemic was an accelerant to this? Yeah, was absolutely. It the, was it the catalyst, really, and then you guys compressed it, or were you, had you already started on the, on well, the journey? Well, we were ready. I mean, you, but you came on, right? Just what, just before the pandemic? Or, yeah. yeah, so I came on in 2019, pandemic started in 2020 early, so we got lucky a little bit because we had a head start. I, had, uh, I was already working with uh, UiPath, and uh, we had come up with design patterns that we're going to take this journey for all DMV channels with using UiPath. So it was about timing that when it happened, it accelerated the need and it accelerated uh, the actual work. I was thinking I'll have a one-year plan. I executed all of the one-year plan items in less than two months out of necessity. So it accelerated definitely the execution of my plan. So when you talk about um the chat channel. Mm -hmm. Is that bots, is that humans, or a combination? Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of it. Uh, I would say more AI than bots. Bots do the service fulfillment work. So there is the user interaction, where you have, you're saying something, the, the chat answers those questions. But then, if you want something, hey, I want my, re my registration renewed, right? It would take you to the right channel. And this is something we do today on our IVR channel. If you call in the DMV number in California, you'll see that your registration renewal is all automatic. You also have a AI listening to it, but also when you are saying, yep, I want to do it, then bot triggers certain aspects of the service fulfillment because our legacy is still sitting about 60 years old. And we are able to still provide this modern facade for our customers with no gap and as quickly as possible within a month's time. How many exactly. DMVs are in the state? Okay, so we have 230 different field locations, out right. of which 180 are available for general public services. Okay, so, and then you're, you're creating a digital overlay That's right. to all of that. Right? Yeah, it's digital and virtual overlay, right? Digital is fully self-service, bots can do all your processing, automation can do all the processing, AI can do all the processing. But then you have virtual channels where you have customer interacting with the technicians, our technicians, virtually. But once a technician is done solving the problem, they click a button and bot does rest of the work for the technician. So that's where we are able to get some back office efficiency and transaction reduction. When was the last time you walked into a bank? Oh branch. man. I mean, is that where we're going here? Where you just don't yes, have to go into the and, branch And that is the goal. Anymore? In fact, we already have a starting point. I mean, just like you have ATM machines, we have kiosks already that do some of this automation work for us today. The goal is to not have to, have to unless you really want to, we actually set up these personas. One of them was High Touch Henry. He likes to go to the field office and talk to people. <laughs> we are there for them. But for the millennials, for the people who are like, I don't have time, I want to like quickly finish this work, off hours, 24 by seven, which is where bots come in, they do not Weekends, have an HR right? complaint. They don't have overtime. They're able to solve these problems for me, 24 and, by and seven. And what's the scope of your, like how many automations, how many bots, can mm -hmm. you give us a sense? Uh, sure, so right now we're sitting at 36 different use cases. We have collected six point, of uh, eight point, well, we have saved 8.8 .8 million dollars just using the bots. Overall savings, if you were to look at virtual field office, which uh, bots are part of, we have collected $388 million so far in that particular channel. Uh, bots, I've also saved paper. I've saved a million sheets of paper through the bot, which uh, I'm uh, trying to remember how many trees wow. it equates to, but it's a whole lot of trees that I've saved it, so And how far many bots are we talking about? Uh, so it's 36 different use cases. So 36 bots? Well, no, no, there's more bots. I want to say, so we are running at 85% efficiency, 50 bots. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, okay. So you, you asked uh, the question about, you know, when was the last time someone was in a bank? The last time I was in a bank, it was to deposit you know, more than $10,000 in cash because mm -hmm. of a cash transaction, someone bought a car from me. It was more of a nuisance. I felt like I was being treated like a criminal. I was very clear what I was doing. I had just paid off a loan with that bank and I was giving them the cash for that transaction. As opposed to the DMV transaction, transferring title, that was easy. The DMV part was easier <laughs> than the bank. And you're trying to make it even easier. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be yes. that way. Right. But, but 
I, I, have, a, I have a question for you on, um, on that bot implementation. Can you give us, you've sort of given us examples of how they interact. Yeah. But as your uh, uh, kind of prototypical California driver's license holder, how has that improved uh, a, a specific transaction that I would be involved with? Can you? So, well, you as a Californian and you as a taxpayer, you as a Californian getting services and you as a taxpayer getting the most out of the money that okay. the DMV spending on providing services, right? Both are benefits to you. Sure. So bots have benefited in both of those areas. Um, if you were used to the DMV three years ago, there was a whole lot of paper involved. You got to fill this form out, you got to fill this other form out, and you got to go to DMV. Oh, by the way, your form, you didn't bring this thing with you. Your form has issues. We are calculated that about 30% of paper workloads are wasted because they just have bad data, right? There's no control, there's nobody telling you, hey, do this right, even dates could be wrong, uh, names could be wrong, fields may be incomplete and such. So we were able to automate a whole lot of that by creating self-service channels which are accelerated by bots. So we have these web acceleration platforms that collect the data, bots do the validation, they also verify the information, give you real-time feedback or near real-time feedback that, hey, this is what you need to change, this is what you need to verify. So all the business rules are in the bot. And then, once you're done, it'll commit the information to our legacy systems, which wouldn't have been possible unless a technician was punching it in manually. So there is a third cohort of Californians, which is our employees. We have 10,000 of those. They, I don't want them to get carpal tunnel. I want them to make sure they're spending more time thinking and helping our customers, looking at the customers rather than typing things. And that's what we are able to accomplish with the bots where you press that one button, which would have required maybe 50 more keystrokes and that's gone. And now you're saving time. You're also saving the effort and the attention loss uh, serving the customers. Ajay, what does it take to get a new process on board? So like from, I'm thinking about Real ID. Yeah. I just went through that in Massachusetts. I took, it was going to be months to get to the DMV, so I ended up going through a AAA, had to get all these documents, I uploaded all the documents, of course when I showed up, none were there. Thankfully I had backup copies, but it was really a pleasant experience. Are you, describe what you're doing with Real ID and what role bots play. Yeah, sure. So, with Real ID, what we are doing today and what, I, what we'll be doing in the future, so I can talk about both. What we are doing today is that we are allowing most of the work to be done upfront by the customer, because Real ID is a complex transaction. You've got to have four different pieces of documentation, you need to provide your information, it needs to match our records, and then you show up to the field office, and by the way, oh man, I did not upload this information. We are getting about 15 to 17% returns, oh. customers, and that's a whole lot of time. Every single mile our customer travels to the DMV office, which averages to about 13 miles in my calculation, uh, for average customer, it's a dollar spent in carbon footprint, in the time lost, in the technician time, trying to triage some of the things. So you're talking $26 per visit to the economy. And amazing frustration yes, that has and, to come yeah, back. And, and our customer satisfaction scores, which we really like to track, goes down right away. So, in general, for Real ID, what we have been, what we have done is created a bunch of self-service channels, which are accelerated by uh, workflow engines, by AI, and by bots to collect the documentation, verify the documentation uh, against external systems because we actually connect with Department of Homeland Security to verify, you know, what's your passport about? We look at your picture and we verify that, yep, it is truly a passport and yours and not your wife's, right? Uh, or not a picture of a dog and it's actually truly you, right? I mean, people do all kind of fun stuff by mistake or intentionally. So, we want to make sure we save time for our customers, we save time for our, for our employees and we have zero returns required when employees, when customer shows up, which by the way is requirement right now, but the Department of Homeland Security is in a rule-making process and we are hopeful, very hopeful at this point in time, that we'll be able to take the entire experience and get it done from home. And that will give us uh, a whole lot more efficiency as you can imagine. Uh, and bots are at the tail end of it committing all the data and transactions into our systems faster and with more accuracy. 
Well, it's a great story. I mean, really, congratulations. And, and uh, I guess I'll leave it, last question is, where do you want to take this? What's, the, what's your roadmap look like? What's your runway look like? Is, it, is there endless opportunities to automate at the state, or do you see a sort of light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, sure, so uh, there is a thing I shared in the previous session that I was in, which is be modern while we modernize. So that's been the goal with the bot. They are integral part of my transition architecture as I modernize the entire DMV, bring them from 1960, bring us from 1960 to 2022 or even 2025 and do it now, mm. right? So bots are able to get me to a place where customers' expectations are managed. They are getting their online, they're getting their mobile experience, they are avoiding making field office trips. Uh, and avoiding any kind of paper-based processing, right, for our employees and customers as well. Um, so bots are serving that need today as part of the transition strategy going from 1960 to 2022. In the future, they're continue, going to continue to serve us. I think it's one of the things that was talked about by the previous sessions today that we, uh, they, they are looking at empowering the employees to do their own work, back office work, also in a full automation way, and self-empower them to automate their own processes. So that's one of the strategies we're going to look for. But also, we'll continue to have a strategy where we need to remain nimble with upcoming needs and have a faster go-to-market market, uh, plan using the bots. Outstanding. Well, th thanks so much for sharing your, your story, and uh, and thanks for helping Dave. Real-life testimony. Be a, never be never a thought customer. I'd be coming on to praise the California DMV. But awesome. here I am, and it's legit. Yeah, well, well uh, done. Can I, can I make an introduction to our Massachusetts uh, yeah. colleagues? <laughs> Good to, yeah. well actually we have, we have been working with state of New York, Massachusetts, Nevada, Arizona, so Good. our goal is to share, but yeah. also learn from them. Help us out, yeah. help us out. Uh, but yeah. nice to be here. Um, Great to have and, you. And uh, looking for feedback uh, next time you visit DMV. All right, oh, Absolutely. yeah, get that, Thanks. fill out that NPS score. All right, <laughs> and thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for Dave Nicholson, Forward 5 UiPath Customer Conference from the Venetian in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. <laughs>